Okay, today we proceed with module 6, computing components, processes, memory, the cloud, and more. Okay, uh, before we proceed, uh, let's record back what have we learned in our previous uh, class. So, in our previous class, uh, we have uh, gone through part of chapter 2. So, in chapter 2, I have highlighted about uh, motherboard, uh, slot, uh, memory. Okay, we have RAM, ROM. Uh, flash memory and then for processors which is uh, CPU we have ALU uh, CU and then uh, we also have seen about bus expansion bus system bus slot okay and then uh, what else about the ports okay so today uh, we're going to look at uh, something related to the previous class okay but <clears throat> uh, little bit details okay for processors memory okay okay so next okay now let's look at uh, inside the case so what is the case the case contains and protects the electronics of the computer and mobile device from damage so cases for computers and mobile devices are available in variety of uh, shapes and sizes okay uh, so what is inside the case? So what are the inside of the case? Okay, so we have a uh, power supply and fan, uh, sound card, hard disk, okay, processor, uh, heat sink and fan, memory module. Okay. Uh, okay, this one is inside the desktop. Okay, inside the desktop we have sound card. Okay, we have two division here. Okay, uh, desktop and laptop. So inside the laptop, we have power supply and fan, sound card, uh, hard disk, uh, processor, and heat sink and fan, and also memory. So same goes to the laptop. Uh, inside the laptop, we have also the processor, heat sink and fan, integrated sound ports and circuitry, uh, battery, and then uh, memory module. So this figure shows typical components in a higher end desktop and less uh, laptop. Many basic laptops, uh, many basic that de uh, desktops have integrated video and sound capabilities similar to the laptop image. Okay. So kalau sekarang ni, uh, kalau desktop kebiasaan dia dah dia dah ada built-in speaker kan. Okay, kalau dulu dulu kita perlu attach uh, external speaker okay uh, so dia dah ada sound card semualah okay next um okay. the motherboard is the main circuit but uh, of the computer okay this one i have mentioned in our previous uh, class okay part of chapter 2 so motherboard a uh, main circuit board a computer chip is a small piece of semiconductor material usually silicon on which integrated circuits are ash Okay, so this one also we have uh, seen uh, in our previous class. Okay, so still inside the case, a desktop motherboard and uh, this is the comparison between desktop motherboard and laptop motherboard. Okay, this is the uh, laptop motherboard. Slots for memory and modules, slot for chip. Okay, square, square shape. This one uh, rectangle. It can be set as rectangle and then ports to connect peripheral devices. Okay, bila kita buka dalaman dia tu, ni adalah uh, motherboard dia. And then for <coughs> desktop, okay, uh, then we have CMOS battery, ports to connect peripheral devices, slot for adapter cards, okay, slot for memory module, slot for processor chip, okay, okay. Okay, still about processors, just to recall back, uh, processor also called the CPU, interpret and carries out the basic instructions that operate a computer. Multicore processor is a single chip with two or more separate uh, processor cores, okay, that is dual core, quad core. Then uh, processors contain a control unit and arithmetic logic unit. Okay, uh, most devices connected to the computer communicate with the processor to carry out a task. So we can say that... Uh, the 
processor is like a brain of the computer. So we have control unit, arithmetic logic unit, and then this part uh, communicate instructions, data information with the memory, and then memory uh, actually gets uh, input data from input devices and provide uh, information to the output devices. And then also uh, memory uh, communicate instruction and data information with the storage devices. Okay. Processes control unit component of the direct and coordinate most uh, coordinates most of the operation in the computer. ALU another component of the processor perform arithmetic comparison and other operation. So ALU ni dia lebih kepada perform arithmetic addition subtraction. Okay. Control unit ni dia lebih kepada uh, coordination of the operation dalam computer. Okay. Uh, next. Okay. Okay. For every instruction, a processor repeats a set of four basic operations which comprise a machine cycle. Okay. Satu machine cycle ada empat basic operation ni iaitu uh, <coughs> fetch decode execute store okay uh, <clears throat> first one the control unit okay step one control unit fetch the calculations instruction and data from memory so untuk uh, processor ni process satu-satu basic instruction ataupun uh, ya yeah, uh, instruction dia akan melalui empat basic operation ni then, uh, step pertamanya, control unit akan mengambil uh, instruction tu, mengangkut instruction tu dari uh, memory. Okay, that is the first phase, first operation iaitu fetch. Okay, fetch angkut. Then, second step, the control unit decodes the calculations, instructions and sends the instruction and data to the ALU. Okay, kemudian uh, data itu akan di melalui fasa ataupun uh, Basic operation decode. Decode ni maksudnya seolah-olah macam you translate. Okay. Translate calculation instruction yang diangkut tadi. Okay. Dan uh, instruction dan data tu akan dihantar ke ALU. Arithmetic logic unit. Okay. Tadi diangkut. Dia decode. Dan bawa ke ALU. Okay. Sec uh, third step is execute. Execute ni macam proses lah. Okay. Uh, ALU performs calculations on the data. So, kalau data tu perlu perform addition, dia akan perform addition dalam ALU. Perlu subtraction, buat subtraction. Okay, that is execute. Maksudnya, perform apa yang uh, terkandung dalam instruction tu, dalam arahan tu. Then, a fourth one, the results of the calculation are stored in memory. Then, hasil daripada um, calculation performed by ALU will be uh, stored in memory. So, the result in memory appear on the screen of the monitor. Okay, for example, when you are using calculator application, a student enters a calculation, the app sends the calculation to the computer's memory for processing. Okay. Okay. Then, data tu akan diangkut oleh uh, uh, control unit dibawa ke uh, ALU, kemudian perform calculation tu dalam ALU dan uh, kemudian resultnya akan disimpan dalam uh, memori semula. Okay, contoh kalau you tekan calculator 100 darab 48, okay, dia akan uh, disimpan dalam memori dan control unit akan ambil um, instruction tu bawa ke uh, ALU, ALU akan uh, perform calculation Dapat jawapan akan simpan balik di uh, memori dan uh, appear pada uh, screen calculator. Okay, the processor contains registers that temporarily hold data and process uh, and, and instructions. So, <coughs> dalam processor itu sendiri, ada satu uh, tempat, one place known as register. Okay, register ni untuk memegang data dan juga instruction. Okay, secara sementara. Okay, sebab semua instruction ataupun data disimpan dalam memori. Tetapi bila uh, processor nak proses data tu, okay, 
Prosesor dia ada dua komponen, CU dan ALU. CU akan ambil data tu bawa ke ALU. Jadi, uh, untuk melakukan penambahan ke contohnya, uh, berapa tadi? 48 darab. Contoh tadi dia bagi contoh, 100 darab 48. Jadi, 100, nilai 100 tu akan diletakkan satu register. Nilai 48 tu akan diletakkan dalam satu register. Okay. Dan barulah dia boleh buat operasi penambahan dalam ALU. Okay, so the system clock uh, controls the timing of all computer operations. The pace of the clock, uh, system clock is called the clock speed and is usually measured in gigahertz. Okay, system clock dalam komputer, dalam prosesor ni dikenali sebagai system clock ataupun clock speed. Dan biasanya di unit dia dalam gigahertz. Okay, uh, biasa kalau you nak beli komputer, uh, kita consider juga uh, dia punya speed. Okay, then uh, processors, the leading manufacturers and personal computer processor chips are Intel and AMD. So, ini adalah dua manufacturer bagi processor chips. Okay. Okay, kalau kita tengok uh, brand laptop semua dan uh, desktop, kebanyakan yang akan guna Intel dan AMD. <coughs> processors, still uh, a processor chip generates heat that could cause the chip to uh, malfunction or fail. Okay. <coughs> prosesor itu sendiri sebenarnya menghasilkan uh, haba sewaktu so, dia berfungsi. Jadi, uh, that kind of heat can lead to malfunction or fail of the chip itself. Okay, akan menyebabkan kerosakan pada chip itu sendiri. So, therefore, we require additional cooling. Okay, heat sinks, liquid cooling, uh, cooling technology and cooling pad. So, ini adalah tiga cara yang digunakan untuk cooling purpose of the Process, uh, processes chip, okay, heat sinks, liquid cooling technology and cooling pads. Okay. So, this photo shows a heat sink being attached to the top of a processor to prevent the chip from overheating. So, in dalam dia, heat sink fan and then heat sink and then this is the processor. Okay, attached to the top of the processor to prevent the chip from overheating. Then, uh, cooling pad. Okay, biasanya kalau uh, guna laptop, biasanya disarankan kita guna cooling pad. Okay, to reduce heat generated by a laptop. Kita letak bawah laptop tu untuk uh, sejukkan dia. Okay. Okay, next we move again to, uh, we come again to the uh, term cloud computing. Okay, cloud computing, home and business users choose cloud computing for a variety of reason. So, cloud computing, uh, Improve accessibility, cost saving, space saving and scalability. Okay, cloud computing biasanya kalau kita nak uh, simpan data dekat cloud, okay, dekat Dropbox, dekat Google Drive, maksudnya kita improve accessibility kat mana-mana pun kita boleh access tanpa perlu membawa uh, kita punya external hard disk. Okay. Jadi cost pun uh, jimat, kita tak perlu beli uh, storage, external storage dan sebagainya. Space saving. Okay. Yes, kita tak perlu fikir tentang cukup ke tak, kita nak save apa-apa. Dan scalability also can support many users. Okay. Uh, kalau kita nak uh, collaborate dengan kawan-kawan, buat satu assignment, satu project. So, it's easier if we put it in the cloud. Okay. Next, uh, about data representation. This one also I have mentioned in our previous class. Okay, analog signals are continuous and vary in signal and in strength and quality. Digital signals are in one of of two states on or off. Okay, so uh, data kita ada analog dan digital. So data dalam bentuk uh, contohnya human voice. Okay, suara manusia dalam bentuk analog signal. Okay, digital signal uh, dia hanya ada on off. Okay, on off. Okay, you boleh refer balik uh, previous lesson. Okay, gambar ada figure yang menunjukkan analog, perbezaan analog dan digital signal. So, the, uh, most computers are digital. Okay, sebab apa computers are digital? Sebab dalaman komputer tu data disimpan dalam bentuk binary. Okay, uh, kita ada ASCII, ada uh, beberapa coding yang... Okay. So, computers dalam bentuk binary uh, system use two unique uh, digits, 0 and 1, bits and bytes. So, uh, satu byte bersamaan dengan 8 bits. 
Okay, kita tengok data representation. Okay. Uh, yang ni pun saya dah mention uh, in our previous class. So, the circuitry in a computer or mobile device represent the on of states electronically by the presence or absence of an electronic charge. Okay, so bila kita bercakap tentang uh, komputer, tentang mobile device, dia biasanya berfungsi dalam bentuk binary. Sebab apa? Sebab dia berdasarkan ada elektrik mengalir ataupun tidak dalam uh, motherboard, dalam circuit tu. Circuit motherboard. So, kalau on, uh, satu. Kalau off, kosong. Okay, jadi sebab itulah uh, komputer dia menggunakan konsep binary. On dengan off. Sebab dia hanya ada kosong dengan satu on off. Okay. So, this is the data representation. Uh, dia bagi contoh kalau uh, 8 bits groups together as a unit called a byte. So, biasa kalau kita nak, uh, kita selalu sebut kalau data tentang komputer, kita sebut 1 byte, berapa berapa kilo byte. Okay, sebenarnya byte-byte tu adalah 8 bit. Okay, 8 bit tak kisah lah, sama ada 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So, dalam komputer, setiap perkataan, Uh, setiap uh, nombor akan ditukarkan ke dalam bentuk binary. Kita panggil binary. Binary ni satu sistem yang hanya ada dua nombor saja, kosong dengan satu. Okey, dia macam encode. Okey, setiap perkataan yang kita type, kita masukkan dalam komputer, perlu ditukarkan ke dalam bentuk binary barulah disimpan dalam memori. Okey, how a letter is converted to binary from uh, form and back. Okey, first Uh, step 1, dia bagi contoh, a user press the capital letter T on the keyboard which in turn creates a special code called a scan code for the uh, capital letter T. Okay, bila uh, user tekan, bila you tekan keyboard, contohnya satu huruf, dia akan uh, ditukarkan ke dalam bentuk code. Uh, dinamakan scan code. Scan code for the capital letter T is sent to the electronic circuitry in the computer. So, daripada satu huruf tu, dia menjadi scan code dihantar ke uh, electronic circuit dalam komputer. Step 3, the electronic computer in the uh, the electronic circuitry in the computer uh, converts the scan code for the capital letter T to its ASCII binary code. So huruf T tadi contohnya you tekan huruf T besar, capital letter T. Okay, scan code tadi akan tukarkan T yang you tekan tadi ke, ke dalam bentuk ASCII. Okay, ASCII saya dah sebut uh, previous class. So, ASCII code uh, bagi uh, capital letter T, dia akan tukar kepada bentuk binary 01010100 and stores it in the memory for processing. After processing, the binary code for the capital letter T is converted to an image and displayed on the output device. Okay, bila disimpan dalam memory, kemudian dia akan di uh, displaykan, di, dikeluarkan di screen, di monitor uh, dalam bentuk image. Okay. okay, this is how a letter is converted to binary form. Okay, next, uh, kita tengok lebih detail tentang memory. So, last time uh, I have mentioned there are three types of memory. RAM, ROM dengan uh, flash memory. Okay, ada yang volatile, ada yang non-volatile. Dan ada yang uh, flash memory, dia combine the characteristic of RAM and ROM. Okay, so memory recall back consists of electronic uh, components that store instructions waiting to be executed by the profes, uh, processor, data needed by those instructions and the result of the processing uh, data. So, secara ringkasnya, memory ni adalah electronic component yang menyimpan uh, segala arahan sebelum diproses oleh uh, processor dan juga menyimpan data yang diperlukan untuk melakukan sesuatu instruct untuk uh, kita perform satu instruction dan juga result selepas processing data tadi contohnya bila you tekan calculator tadi arahan untuk uh, calculate 48 darab 100 uh, disimpan dalam memori kemudian bila dah siap perform also result tu akan disimpan semula dalam memori so stores three basic categories of item basic uh, the operating system and other program Operating system and other programs, applications and data being processed and the resulting information. So, secara umumnya ada tiga kategori of items akan disimpan dalam memory. Okay.
Okay, each byte resides temporarily in a location in memory that has an address. So, setiap byte, okay, satu byte, 8 bit, uh, akan berada dalam satu lokasi sementara dalam uh, memory yang dinamakan address. So, memory size commonly is measured in gigabytes, gig, uh, GB. Okay, so apa maksud uh, address? Okay, ni dia bagi analogi. Okay, contohnya kalau ni uh, dewan kuliah, okay, ada tempat duduk yang kosong. So, setiap tempat duduk ni akan ada, okay, kita andaikan sebagai memory cell dalam uh, komputer kita. Jadi, mana-mana uh, cell memory yang tidak ada data, okay, uh, yang tu dipanggil empty cell. Okay, dan setiap uh, tempat duduk ni ada address supaya <coughs> dalam komputer, uh, setiap memory cell akan ada address so that it is easy for the uh, Processor, CU, control unit untuk fetch data tu. Contoh, instruction tu memerlukan data yang berada pada address mana. So, dia akan pergi kepada address tersebut dan angkut data daripada address tersebut bawa ke uh, ALU. Okay. So, di situlah pentingnya uh, setiap memory cell tu ada address. Okay. Uh, next, computers and mobile devices contains two types of memory. Okay, this one I have mentioned. In our previous class, volatile memory and non-volatile. So, volatile RAM, non-volatile ROM. Okay, so for volatile memory, loses its contents when power is turned off. Non-volatile doesn't lose uh, contents when uh, uh, power is removed. Okay, so including ROM, flash memory and CMOS. So, CMOS stands for complementary metal oxide semiconductor. Okay, next. Okay, this figure shows how program and application instruction transfer in and out of RAM. Okay, so gambar yang menunjukkan bagaimana uh, program and application instruction transfer in, uh, dimasukkan dan dikeluarkan daripada RAM. Okay, so kecil je dia punya ni. Uh, okay, step one, when you uh, start the computer, certain operating system, Files are uh, loaded into RAM from the hard drive. The operating system uh, displays the user interface on the screen. Okay, so uh, operating system daripada hard drive okay, akan dimasukkan ke dalam RAM. Bila kita turn on komputer, uh, operating system yang tersimpan dalam hard drive akan di uh, loaded kan ke dalam RAM. Okay, then they akan display uh, user interface dekat Uh, monitor okay, yang you nampak uh, loading ke whatever okay, window is starting then uh, step 2 when you run a browser the application's instruction are loaded into the RAM also from the hard drive the browser and certain operating system instruction are in uh, RAM the browser windows appear on the screen okay, so sama lah bila kita nak uh, run satu-satu aplikasi Okay. Uh, data daripada hard drive akan di ataupun application instruction akan dibawa ke RAM dan di uh, keluarkan dekat uh, monitor. When you uh, okay step 3 when you run a pane application ni bagi contoh the applications instruction are loaded into the RAM also from the hard drive the pane application along with the browser and certain operating system instruction are in RAM. Okay so sekarang ni kita ada Uh, application program uh, untuk pane tadi dan juga untuk browser dan juga operating system uh, loaded into the RAM dan last kali when you exit an application such as the browser its instruction are removed from the RAM bila kita exit sahaja bila kita close apa-apa aplikasi ataupun program uh, data yang tadi berada daripada RAM akan di uh, remove dibuang daripada RAM So, this figure shows how a uh, how program and app, uh, application instruction is transferred in and out of RAM. Okay, konsep dia mudah je. Then, there are two types of RAM actually. So, last time, kita cuma mention RAM, ROM dengan flash memory. So, RAM actually kita ada dynamic RAM dengan static RAM. Okay. So, uh, common uh, DRAM. Okay, ini adalah uh, variations for DRAM. Okay, biasa kalau kita nak beli komputer, kita akan nampaklah term-term ni. Okay, so first, 
SDRAM, synchronous DRAM, synchronize to the system clock much faster than DRAM. Okay. Then DDR, SDRAM, double data rate SDRAM, transfers data twice instead of once for each clock cycle. So, satu clock cycle tu, dia boleh transfer uh, dua kali ganda data. Okay. Berbanding uh, SDRAM. Then uh, DDR2, second generation of DDR, faster than DDR. DDR3, third uh, generation of DDR, designed for computers with multi-core processors. Of course, faster than DDR2. Uh, DDR4, fourth generation, faster of course, bila kita semakin tinggi dia punya number ni, generation dia lebih, menunjukkan dia punya generation. And RDRAM, RAM versus DRAM, much faster than SDRAM. Okay, apa beza dynamic RAM dan static RAM? Okay, secara generalnya, static RAM uh, is a memory chip that is faster and use less power than uh, DRAM. Okay, DRAM is a memory chip that can hold more data uh, than uh, static RAM but requires more power. Okay, uh, so secara ringkas. Okay, next. Uh, this is RAM chips usually reside on a memory module and are inserted into memory slots. Okay, so ni pun kita dah tengok uh, last class. Okay, uh, RAM ni dia akan dimasukkan ke dalam, will be inserted into the memory slot. Okay. So this is the memory chip. Okay, yang hitam ni. Okay. And this is single line, single inline memory module, dual inline uh, memory module. Next, memory cache speeds the processing uh, processes of the computer because it stores frequently used instructions and data. Okay, yang ni pun saya dah sebut uh, in our previous class about cache. Cache ni adalah uh, data, I mean tempat simpanan bagi data yang uh, frequently used. Okay, di antara kedudukan dia antara processor dan uh, memory. Okay. Okay, so we can see here, memory cache helps speed processing time so when the processor request data instruction and or information. Okay, so we have level 1 cache, fastest access. Okay, then level 2, a slow access then. Uh, level 1 cache, level 3, separate chip between processor and RAM. Okay, so uh, dalam, pro dalam processor itu sendiri ada level 1 dengan level 2 cache. Okay, mana data yang paling banyak, paling kerap digunakan will be put in level 1 cache then less uh, frequent use uh, diletakkan dalam level 2 dan uh, kalau less uh, lagi less uh, frequently use dia akan letakkan level, dalam level 3 iaitu berada dalam separate chip uh, between processor and RAM dan kalau lebih rendah daripada tu uh, berada dalam RAM. Data yang paling kurang digunakan akan diletakkan dalam uh, RAM. Okay. Uh, so, of course, level 3, a slow access then level 1 and level 2. Then RAM, slow access then level 1, level 2 and level 3. Okay. So, read-only memory refers to the memory chip storing permanent data, instructions, okay, firmware. Uh, then, flash memory. Uh, can be erased electronically and rewritten. CMOS technology use battery power to retain information when the power to the computer is off. So flash memory ni dia boleh uh, dia editable dan juga dia uh, non volatile. Okay, maksudnya dia combine. Uh, macam saya sebutlah dia combine uh, characteristic of RAM and ROM. Okay, next we have access time. What is access time? Uh, access time. Uh, definition is the amount of time it takes the processor to read from the memory. Masa yang diambil oleh uh, processor untuk membaca data daripada memory. Untuk retrieve. Read tu maksudnya me me retrieve data from memory. So, usually measured in nanosecond. Okay. So, it can process 10 million operations in just one blink. So, access time terminologi 
uh, kita ada selain daripada nanosecond, kita ada microsecond, millisecond, picosecond. Okay. <coughs> Yang ni pun we have covered in our previous class. And then next is adapters. Okay. Uh, we go a little bit about adapters. Adapter card enhance functions of a component of a desktop or server uh, system unit and or provides connection to the peripheral devices, for example, sound card and video card. And expansion slot is a socket on a desktop or server motherboard that can hold an adapter card. So, adapter card ni akan dimasukkan ke dalam expansion slot. Okay, ni adalah contoh-contoh untuk adapter cards. Okay. Uh, for Bluetooth, <coughs> uh, adapter cards for Bluetooth enables Bluetooth connectivity. MIDI connects to musical instrument. Okay, we have seen uh, about the ports last time. So, modem connects to uh, transmission media such as cable, television lines or power li uh, phone lines. Network card uh, provide network connection such as to internet port. Sound connects to speakers or microphone, TV tuner, allows viewing of digital television broadcast. USB connect to high speed USB port. Video provide enhanced graphic capabilities. Video capture connects to digital video camera. Okay, so with plug and play technology, the computer automatically can recognize peripheral devices as you install them. Okay, plug and play ni maksudnya kita boleh macam pen drive, kita just beli, kita cucuk je. Then, uh, <coughs> computer automatically recognize uh, itu adalah pen drive untuk kita store data. So, the card inserted in expansion slot on a desktop motherboard. So, gambar ni menunjukkan card-card uh, uh, tadi. Okay, adapter cards. Okay, macam mana adapter cards tu dimasukkan ke dalam expansion slot dekat motherboard. Ni contohnya video card, sound card. Okay, dan ni adalah motherboard keseluruhannya. Okay, adapters. A USB adapter enhance functions of a mobile computer. Provides connections to peripheral devices. Okay. Okay, next, uh, kita tengok lagi uh, in details about bus. Okay, bus pun saya dah sebut uh, last time. So, a bus allows the various devices both inside and attached to the system unit to communicate with one another. Kita ada uh, system bus dengan expansion bus. Okay, actually, uh, bus also can be divided into two categories, data bus and uh, address bus. So, <coughs> Word size is the number of bits the processor can interpret and execute at a given time. Okay, uh, so bus ni ada yang akan mengangkut uh, data, ada yang akan mengangkut address. Okay, dan word size tu adalah uh, bilangan bit yang mana processor can interpret and execute at a given time. Okay, next. Just as vehicles travel on a highway, bit travel on a bus. So, word size tadi akan travel dalam uh, um, uh, di, di, di bawah oleh bus tadi. Bus tu sebenarnya line dekat motherboard. So, buses are used to transfer bits from input devices to memory, from memory to processor, from processor to memory and from memory to output or storage devices. So, fungsi bus ni adalah untuk membawa bit-bit tadi dalam yang dipanggil word size. Okay, daripada input device. Okay, contohnya pen drive ke external hard disk ke, pergi ke memory, memory, pergi ke processor dan daripada processor bawa ke memory balik lepas dah siap processing. Then from memory to output or storage devices. Okay, so computer might have these three types of bus, system bus. Okay, last time kita sebut just system bus and uh, expansion bus. Okay, this one kita ada satu lagi backside bus. The backside bus ni adalah internal bus that connects the CPU to the cache memory. Okay. Uh, yang ni khusus untuk cache memory. Okay, next. Uh, power supply and batteries. The power supply or laptop AC adapter converts the wall outlet AC power into DC power. Examples of desktop power supply and laptop AC adapter. Okay, uh, kita panggil uh, Charger-charger uh, ni. Okay. Mm. okay. So, mobile computers and devices can run using either a power supply or batteries. So, batteries typically are rechargeable lithium-ion batteries. Okay. For smartphone, for laptop batteries, kita biasa guna lithium-ion. Okay. 